And we're live. Welcome to Reality Hour. I am Eric Asher. Um, joining me today for a special kicking off 2021 episode is Grace and Adam. Hi, guys. Hi. So happy that we're finally back on the, the virtual airwaves. Um, we're going to kick off 2021 by talking about winners, um, favorite winners from all the shows we've watched. And I figured I wanted to start off 2021 with a more positive, upbeat, happy list or happy coverage because we all know that last year kind of sucked. So to move on from that, we're going to do some favorites today. Um, I figured we'd – here's how the rules are going to work. We each picked – we each covered all the shows. We could pick them however we wanted. We're each going to go for our top six winners – um, and then we'll also have honorable mentions, which we will open up with. So, um, before we get into that, how are you guys doing? I'm doing well. A um, little stressed because my job is changing course every five minutes, but we are going to get through this. Yes, we I'm are. Doing, I'm doing well, too. New year, new camera angle. I mean, it's the same place I usually podcast, just... Yeah, Adam, show them, show them, show them, show them, show them how... <laughs> yeah, how I could, this is, does this look from more familiar? It's just literally just a different angle. Uh, I'm so excited to be back. Reality Hour, we're back. So, I missed you guys. I, I was telling Eric and Grace in the pre-show, it's been a while. I'm happy. Uh, Eric has a great idea here that we're going to be doing our, our top six favorite winners. I actually, like... I wrote notes like I have a full like bolded documents with everyone's name in the season. Um, this was actually tough, um, but there are no winners from any shows for the past three years. So I guess there's that I have one from the past three years. So I, well, I don't think I do either. So wait, Eric, what are what shows this covers all shows we watch? Any anything well, is fair game? I I love. I pick different rules for myself, and and I'll let you guys pick whatever rules you wanted. I want to be a singer. Little, for me, Mass dancer. Well, there wouldn't be any numbers <laughs> anyway. But um, for me, I picked only singing singers who won for my top six. But I did a separate category for deserving winners who weren't singers. Um, and you guys, I just let you do whatever you want because I know you watch more shows without singers in them. Mm -hmm. So I figured I would let your list be a little more flexible. I've only got, I think, of my top six, three of them are singers. Um, and Jean Irene would have been number one had she won. Just saying. <laughs> okay. Unfortunately, we can't have nice things. Well, I, I got, look, I got uh, one AGT, a, a couple. There's a f two from The Voice. I got a few AGT, one Dancing with the Stars. Yeah, I, I'm actually like. I feel pretty good about my list. How do you guys feel about yours? I feel like it would have been a lot easier if my list could have been longer, but I think the whole fun of this is keeping it just a six and making it tough mm. for ourselves. So um, how about we go through honorable mentions first? Um, who wants to start? I got three. How I have many do you guys have? I have a lot more than three. I basically I only have three. Everyone I liked that wasn't on the list, I put in my honorable mentions. All right, so you go, you go, Eric. Tell me some. Uh, tell me first. Okay, so first category of my honorable mentions: deserving winners that weren't singers. Um, Shin Lim, number one in that category. Not on the list. Wow, no. I was thinking yeah, he'd be number only one. Singers on my list. Only singers on my list. Um, because I limited myself. If, if I didn't, Shin Lim would be on the list. Um, Darcy Lin, um, Paul Zerden, Lost Voice Guy from Britain's Got Talent. Those are before, but I have. In that category, um, I had I had Darcy and Paul on my non singers list. Mm -hmm. uh, mine is all just mish mishmash together. Like I've got yeah. singers and everyone. Um, who who do you have in yours, um, Grace? Okay, so my non singers, I had Darcy and Paul, and then I also had Gabby, who won "So You Think You Can Dance" a few years ago. She is fantastic. Uh, and then my HMs, I had, this is going to be shocking to some of you, uh, from Dancing with the Stars, I had Lori Hernandez, love her. Mm -hmm. And then two from X Factor UK, Matt, Terry, and Louisa. Louisa was very close to my top six, by the way. I felt bad not putting her in there, but. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, let well, me go for uh, my honorable mentions now. Um, 
I have two more categories. Um, people who didn't deserve to win compared to their competition, but are still quite great and who I still love seeing. Um, Little Mix is, is on that list for me. I personally think Amelia Lily should have won that season, but what are you going to do? They're they're awesome, and their career since the show has been amazing. And Chris Allen, because I like him. He's great. But Adam Lambert was in a different league and deserved to win that season. Um. And that's, that's, that was keeping Chris off the list for me because as much as I like Chris as music he's put out post-idol, I couldn't, I, for me, I just couldn't put him on the deserving winner's list. Um, then more deserving winners, he would have made a longer list. Um, number seven for me on this list would have been Louisa from X Factor. Um, Matt Terry was on my honorable mentions. Dami M, Isaiah Firebrace. I didn't Sam put Dami just because I didn't watch her season. Sam Bailey and Leona Lewis. So, all right. I watched Dami on Eurovision, but she didn't win. And then same with Dancing with the Stars Australia, but she was terrible in that show. <laughs> she was so good on X Factor. Um, the hype around her was a little bit a little bit much because they were like so happy that they had someone that was so good, but mm -hmm. it wasn't. It was a little bit. Of, they stood yeah. up for every single week. Out of in Australia, the winners actually have talent. What? In Australia, the X Factor winners have talent. In the U.S. and the U.K., they don't. The U.K., they do. Them. Yeah, the U.S. ones don't. <laughs> well, yeah, no. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, my honorable mentions. Um, so I, I'm just throwing them all together. This is I, – I, if I was making, like, a top nine, these would have been um, not, like, seven, eight, not ninth eight, place. Nine. So one of them, I put Matt Franco. AGT season nine. Um, in my opinion, my favorite winning magician act. I know that's like blasphemy, but like I would Matt Matt seem the more personable, if that makes sense. Like Shinlin, it's just different styles. I think it just comes down to taste personally. Uh, see, Grace at least is nodding with me. Like I didn't watch both very talented. I didn't watch Shin's season of AGT, so I can't really comment, but I did watch uh, that one magician, I don't remember his name, win BGT. Richard Jones? Yeah, him. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, Matt Franco, I would probably put him at, um, he would have been like seventh for me on my list. Then who I would have put at eight, I put Tessan Chin from The Voice. I think that Love was her. one oh, of the greatest. Uh, I think that was the best season of The Voice, in my opinion, that I've seen. And I think she, top tier winner of a top tier season. Like, just incredible talent. So good. Just if you, that season, in my opinion, has the most rewatchability of any any show that we talk about. Like, if I would recommend a season of the ones that I've watched, at least, I would say go watch that season of The Voice. It was season five. So she would have that been was, in number. Go on. That was like a weird season, though, because there were like no front runners. And everyone of, was so good. Well, yeah. I mean, Christina had that one guy, Matthew Schuler, who's actually from my hometown. So I was hoping he would get to hometown visits, but he never did because Christina screwed him. Um, but no, like, and then when all the other front runners started to fall, she started to rise, and that's how she won. Because I mean, season. Adam, Adam never like does right by his contestants because she was on Adam's team. But that one, he actually got right. <laughs> Truly, though, that season. Yeah. Incredible talent, just so good. And she's one of the best. It had Jackie Lee. It had just, it had Holly Henry, who I love to win home in the knockouts. I, I love that say, singer. I know it. I know. And um, oh god, Matt Matthew Schuler is just so good. There's a yes. guy, I do, everyone on that season, he, he James Wolpert, every cat, like just everyone. James Wolpert, he did I'm uh gonna Point because I can't listen to you talk about the voice of our right. anyway. Like, I have a voice my, actually, I have a voice Australia winner and a voice USA winner on my list, so you're gonna have to deal. The voice my last fine, that's different. That that one doesn't have Mark Burnett's fingerprints on it. So my, I'm fine. My that. last honorable mention in ninth place, I put Nick Fradiani from American Idol. Um yeah, look, didn't have the most like mind-blowing run but i loved him as a contestant i loved rooting for him him and Jax made that season for me they were when i was ranking that season i would have said nick and Jax were my favorite two contestants going into the top 
I would say even like top 40, like before the spoilers and the fact that he made it just, and he won and following him from beach Avenue on AGT, it was just so much fun. And I had to at least give him a little shout out because I just loved watching him on the show. We'll talk more about Nick later. All um, right. So that's, those are my honorable, that would have been uh, se- uh, seven, eight, nine, Matt Franco, Tess and Chin, Nick Fradiani. Okay. All right. Well, who wants to go first with their number six? I feel like I just did a lot more talking, a lot of talking. <laughs> so uh, I'll keep talking if you guys want. Go ahead. <laughs> um, my sixth place winner of all time. Um, I gave this person this spot really because of one performance that was done um, two weeks before the semifinal. No, two weeks before the finale. Uh, Paul Zerden. AGT uh, season 10. I think he, like I said, that one performance is in my opinion, one of the greatest things I've ever seen on that show. And um, his was, I think like the beginning of the decline of AGT, but it went out with a bang in my eyes. And he is an incredible, one of the funniest, the the funniest thing I've seen on one of them. I, uh, I don't even know who else I could think, but very top tier talent. I will say, of all the performances of Lost America's Got Talent, that one made me laugh the most by far. So I will say that that is a completely valid decision. And if I was mixing in singers with um, with other types of acts, Paul would have been in my top ten. So, Do you agree, Grace? Is it a good pick? Yeah, it's a good pick. I love Paul Zerden. Um, like I said, I just I watched a lot of singing shows. So I've and I've liked a lot of singers, so that's kind of what kept him off my list. Mm-hmm. Totally valid choice, though. Okay, Grace, you want to go next or? Uh, sure. Okay, so my number six. Uh, I don't think either of you are familiar with him. He's an X Factor Australia winner, uh, Cyrus Villanueva. I watched that season. He was I don't know who that is. Love him. He I like won- him a lot. He won the second to last season. I only watched the last two seasons before the show got canceled. Um, but yeah, I mean, I don't remember his audition at all. And then five chair challenge killed everybody else. Top 11 when he did wicked game. That was really good. Uh, I really, I mean, it's a little bit shameless for Chris Isaac to give him that song. Cause Chris oh, Isaac was absolutely shameless, it, it, but, but, but Australian shows do that. It seems. <laughs> They don't have rules, and like I mean, it fit the theme because that theme was like decades challenge. Each category had a different decade. The boys, which he was in the, boys. was in the air tonight, though. I thought that was his best performance. Yeah, I mean, Wicked Game is one of those that I just keep going back to and knocking on Heaven's Door because they like they let the other judges pick songs and Guy picked that song for him, and I was like nervous for it, but then I was like, okay, at some point something would really have to give for him not to win, and nothing oh. gave. What I did basically for my first years, a couple of years of X Factor Story, is I would pick the one contestant I liked and then watch them, and that was it. He was the one that year. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, he was really good. There, my- were a, there were a lot of good performances that year that I keep going back to, but like I said, Wicked Game and Knocking on Heaven's Door definitely take the cake for that. Yeah. Eric, you're up. Your turn. All right. I am up. So, for my number six, I'm going to put Nick Fradiani. Um, Great Idol winner and the best winning single of anyone who's ever been on the show. Um, yes, I'm sitting home. Could be the last. With this bumps, yes. With this bumps. Uh. Did it. Um, <laughs> but I'm actually putting him on the list not for what he did on the show, but what he's done since the show. I think he's put out some. His EP, Where We Left Off, had some really good songs on it. Nick is just an awesome, awesome songwriter. He can really write a catchy tune. And. Um, So, and as I said, as we both said, when we interviewed him last year, which was really fun, 2019. so cool. That was so awesome. Um, He's sort of the reason Reality Hour exists, and for sentimental reasons, I kind of had to put him on the list. Um, Because Adam and I sort of started talking when we were basically bitching about Beach Avenue getting cut by Howie. Uh, Good times. The OG days. We we blame Howie for that one. But, you know. Well, yeah. <laughs> and we're just blaming Howie. <laughs> yes. three, there were three other judges that season. 
That's the biggest reason we hate Howie, Grace. Like that. <laughs> well, no, it's not. It's not the biggest reason. It's one of the reasons we hate Howie. I think for a bigger reasons, personally. All right. Is it my turn now? Do I go? Yeah. What's going up? All so right. Cool. I will say, as number five is pretty easy, but once we got to like four, this got really, really hard for me. But five, I think I was almost going to put her there. And then I was like, I would maybe leave her out. Darcy Lynn. Yeah, I put her at number I five. Put just... her on my list. Love her. She didn't put her. You didn't put her at all, Grace? I had her as an HM, but I was very torn about putting her in the top six. Nah, she's, in my opinion, one of the best winners. Um, a top tier through and through, stayed at the top, remained at the top, had consistently good performances. I don't think there was ever a dud or anything close to a dud. The Incredibly talented. Was a finale with Terry Fader when she tripped over a line. But honestly, the fact that she made it till after the voting closed before she even had the slightest screw up, just infuriatingly good. Yes, she would have been in my top 10 easily. Probably top six, honestly. I think <laughs> she she's so good. She, I mean, I think my favorite moment from her. This is like totally irrelevant, but she appeared on Kids Baking Championship, which is a Food Network show with Petunia. And at one point, Petunia decided to sass her. She's like, "You're not the boss of me." Well, actually, you are. And I'm like, I still laugh at that to this day because <laughs> that was the first time my mom had seen her, and I'm like, "Yeah, I know who she is." <laughs> Who won AGT season 11? This is a dumb Grace question. Grace Vanderwall. But... Oh, I was just looking at my list and I was like, I think I have everyone from every season except for this one. And I was like, who was it? I don't know. Anyway, yeah, great. Uh, Darcy is just superbly talented. So, of course, I had to put her on. Good choice. Yes. Grace, you're up. All right, my number five is my lone voice Australia winner, my favorite since the blinds. He was the first audition of the season, and he stayed number one. It's Alfie R. Curie. I don't know who that is. <laughs> I, I absolutely love him. He, um, he actually was in the national final for Eurovision last year, I believe, but he wasn't picked. Um, yeah, it was last year. Even if he likes pineapple on pizza, he is a fantastic singer. And I, like I said, my favorite since the since the blinds he was the very first audition loved him he did scars by james bay i was a little nervous when he picked delta as his coach but delta is also my favorite coach so that doesn't hurt either <laughs> and that show actually had rules back then so huh. okay. it had it had rules until they let all stars on the show well at that point they're just giving up on the whole idea of rules or the season before that when that loop guy won but i don't know okay Anyway, my <laughs> number five, Dalton Harris. Um, really? Really. Oh, he loves Dalton. Oh, yeah. Very big Dalton fan. Go ahead, Eric. Why? Okay. It's early. He hasn't released a ton of music post-show yet. But of all the contestants on this entire list, I think he had the most flawless run on this season. Not a single misstep. He's the best male singer on this list. Um, and I've... And he's only at number five, mostly because his he hasn't had released a, he hasn't released anything yet really. But um, his duet with James Arthur, who we'll get to later, on the Power of Love was such a mind-numbingly awesome performance that if X Factor UK never comes back, at least it went out on the highest note it possibly could. Wikipedia seems to think that X Factor is ending because they literally have in their dates two thousand four to two thousand eighteen. Would not surprise me, but. Um, at least it went out with a bang. I'll say that. <laughs> I mean, that performance, I think of all the performances I've ever watched, I think it's, it's, it's definitely in my top three, that, that duet. Um, it was mind-numbingly good. <laughs> so, I mean, we podcasted about him, and uh, yeah, I, I think the biggest thing that annoyed Eric about Dalton, if anything, was that he was on my draft team, and I won with him. I didn't give a shit. <laughs> he was so good, <laughs> but it did not matter to me if Jimmy was on. He delivered. It's a good pick. It's a, it's a good pick. Now, see, when I did the dance with the Stars draft, I was just like, no, I want to win. <laughs> but I didn't have to try very hard because I, I, just, had a, I got I to win. Carol Baskin. I like to win. I was going to say, you picked Carol Baskin before I picked You would have been number one on this list. If she won, she would have been. <laughs> 
She would have been number one She on the worst winners of Dancing with the Stars list ever. And that's saying something. She would have been. Bobby, the gap between Bobby Bones and everybody else is like even bigger than I can fit on this screen. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm looking forward to Grace's number one spot too, Bobby Bones. <laughs> <laughs> didn't even crack my, didn't even cross my mind. Oh man, that would have been is great. It, okay, is it my turn? Yeah, you're number four. I will say from this point on, every contestant is from a different show. And oh. speaking of Grace talking about Dancing with the Stars, I got a Dancing with the Stars winner. Um, any guesses, Grace? Is it Bindi or one? It is Bindi Irwin and Derek. My first season watching Dancing with the Stars. Look, for me, first seasons are always like the make it or break it for me for a show. I started watching the season. Bindi, I think, was one of the reasons I started watching it. Her and Alexa Penavega. And just the two of them together, watching them made the season such a joy. Her dances were so much fun. I watch Dancing with the Stars because of this this duo. And I love them. They're still such a joy to go back and rewatch their old performances. Yeah, I, I just love them personally because it brought me to Dancing with the Stars. And yeah, if it wasn't for them, I don't know if I would still be watching, honest. Like, if I would have gotten on the train in the first place. I was going to say, you stuck through a season of Tai Tai. So... <laughs> You're a trooper. <laughs> You're all- what did you think? Seasons on AGT. What did you think of of Bindi when she was on the show? Like, what did you think of that season? Because that's my favorite season of the show still to this day. I knew she was going to win from the second it happened. I mean, I wanted Nick Carter to win so much. I knew. Yeah. I knew Bindi had it. <laughs> I knew Bindi had it from the get go. Um, but no, she she consistently delivered. She was a joy to watch. And she had the whole sob story talking about her dad every week. So that's a yeah. winning formula. That also now, had Tamar Braxton, who won yes. Big Brother. Although I'm still mad. That was the most stressed I've ever been watching Dancing with the Stars, that episode. Because, Eric, allow me to set the stage. Do you know what happened? I do, yeah. so I'm not going to spoil anything. <laughs> so, Tamar Braxton, I think she's sick or something. And she... Yeah. If this, the rule is if she doesn't perform on the stage, she's automatically eliminated. So going in, I was terrified for – I had Bindi and I had Alexa Panavega, who I was really, really invested in. And I had a pretty strong feeling that Alexa was going to go home. So when I find out Tamar isn't going to perform, I'm like, this is perfect. Tamar is going to go home. Alexa is going to make it. So Tamar's performance is supposed to come. She doesn't perform. They – film like a, a rehearsal video it's so not a like, rehearsal tape. that's what they usually do i was like oh my yeah. god it, it, we're good we're in the clear the show is like there's 10 minutes left there's one more performance they're gonna do um tamar braxton comes out performs she Alexa like goes shows up looking like death <laughs> <laughs> and she performs makes it through and my favorite goes home which stinks because she got straight tens twice that round and then Tamar withdrew like a day or two later and people were like furious about it. Like, Can you bring the back? I was like, no, that's not how the show works. I was so, I think they should have cut, ta- look, Tamar went on to win Big Brother, but like for dancing. I heard she was stars, great on that show. Big Brother, yeah. it depends who you ask. But ask, I ask loved, the other Eric and he loved her. I loved Bindi. Anyway, I love that. Tangent over, rant over. <laughs> I, I liked it. Yeah, I think both Celebrity Big Brother winners were Dancing with the Stars contestants. Yep. Well, because they have the same casting director, so they have a lot of alumni from both mm-hmm. shows. Mass Singer does, too. That's why they share so much alumni. Or a family of alumni. All right. Grace, your number four. My number four is Candace Glover. <laughs> love, really? love her. I love her. Loved her when she was on the show. Didn't keep up with her as much on the sh- like, and then when I like, I did a rewatch the summer after the show ended on Fox, and I was like, oh my god, I love her even more. Consistently she fantastic, was really, really good. I was she she would have she was basically like, if I put everyone I liked on the shows, she would have been a model for mentions list. So mm-hmm. I don't she, think she would have won any other season, to be honest with you. But she, I mean, probably not. But, I mean, at least that top two performance night of that season was really good between the two of them. Yeah. And, yeah, Candace deserved to win easily. Absolutely. Not even close. For me, 
Candace felt like a fan of the show playing the game. Like someone who Absolutely. has seen like who has seen what works. I feel like she studied like the games of Haley Reinhardt of like and <laughs> you know for a fact I love Candace. Yeah, and I think that's the best kind of a winner. Someone who is first of all, I could tell that she's a fan of the show. I don't know how much she likes it nowadays. It, it's kind of a little <laughs> like I because I, I remember really enjoying her in the season and then kind of she is one of those winners that just kind of like faded away. Like you don't really hear about any new things from her like recently, like any big stories. But on the show, she was hot. She was great. She was going great performances. One of the greatest American Idol runs, like just in terms of strict planning, like just how she she felt like a study, like a studied person who had, who knew what she was doing. And sometimes people go on these shows and they're like, ah, I'm going to be influenced by the producers. I'm going to just do whatever. No, Candace was here for blood and she came and she slaughtered. <laughs> and I think she's definitely worthy of being on, on a list. Well, yeah, and she, actually, was, she was robbed totally in season 11. So that's why right. she's out for blood. Because they didn't have, they did not cast a single black girl in the live shows. She should have made it. And then season 12, they decided to cast a bunch of terrible guys to try to get a girl to win. And I mean, I'm, and Even though was totally Lazaro. manipulative, I mean, Lazaro I was robbed for the show forever, but at least they got five girls in the top five. Oh man. <laughs> anyway, yeah. Because none of them play guitar. Whoa. Jordan Sparks even said it in the finale. <laughs> that was one of the greatest skits ever on. on yeah, the, the good news. I don't love Paul Jolly. No. I totally forgot that he existed, but thanks. And the good news is I, I, I know the top five. It was Curtis, Paul Jolly, Devin, Lazaro, Burnell. Yep. Bam. The guy. You you switched the order a little bit, but yeah. But no, I mean Jordan even mentioned Idol Leftovers have been doing really well in the voice, and then a few years later, Sundance Head from season six went on to win the voice yep. and then talk smack about it. <laughs> but he's in trouble for other oh, reasons man. too. We'll get to him later. What other reasons? Apparently he's on your he's list. Like, no, he's not. Thank goodness. But no. So how he, are we going to get to him later? We're not. But apparently he like completely. <laughs> just, apparently he is one of those COVID deniers. So. No, whatever. Oh, oh. And Yikes. then he claims that Gabby Barrett has been successful because she was on the right show that gave a shit. Well, she was. But... <laughs> I don't know if that is more about the show or him. Like that he went on The Voice. Like. No, no, no. Anyway. Anyway. Voice. <laughs> my number four doesn't Matt mean much title. nowadays no means absolutely it never meant anything wait matt title matt cardle number four. Matt oh, cardle. he was the guy who looks like one direction the one direction guy that's matt terry oh. matt oh. cardle beat one direction and oh, really? Lloyd. Yeah, yeah one direction came in third Cher Lloyd came in fourth Matt Cardle, Matt cardle won. won every single week of those live shows except for week one where he came in second um, Matt Cardle was the first winner of the X Factor Two season I watched in its entirety. Um, his vocal on the first time ever I saw her face alone would have put him on this list. Um, here's how good he is. I'm planning on flying to London after COVID ends for a vacation. Oh, man. After a vacation for a vacation after COVID ends, and I'm timing that vacation around when that's performing because I need to see him live. So, oh, I want to go to L- to London. I've been there on a high school trip. And then was when I was fun? in college, yeah, we didn't we weren't there for very long. But then and when I was in college, we were gonna march in the New Year's parade, but then the they, the university disapproved the trip, so we didn't go. Boo. Yeah, really. Anyway. It was, yeah, moving on. But Matt, seriously, one of the best runs I've ever seen. And I'm including the fact that he got sick in week nine and like could barely speak and, and had some serious issues in week nine. And then um, just seriously one of the best contestants. Um, I could go for all of his performances were great. Um, first time ever I saw her face, Baby One More Time, which he did with acoustic guitar was amazing. Um, nice and white satin. I could go on. For, he had so many amazing performances. And the music he's put out after the show has also been really, really, really good. So. All right. But then Simon put all of his eggs onto One Direction's basket. Yeah. I don't, yeah. And Honestly, Cheryl Lloyd. That was, that was my first time I was really pissed off at Simon because Matt had so much talent. And Cher Lloyd, yep. who 
shouldn't even have made the live shows, but we'll we'll talk about that later. Disagree. She didn't even sing at Cheryl's house. She she's actually really good though. She is, but I mean, still, she didn't even sing at Cheryl's house. None of the other judges besides Cheryl would have put her through. I'm glad I'm glad they overlooked that because I've actually seen her live twice, and she's really good. So anyway, all right, let's let Adam talk. <laughs> I got to tell you, from this point on, this got really hard. Like, I was switching it around my top three, um, all from different shows, but this was very hard. But I put in third place Maddie Poppy from American Idol, season 16 slash one. Yeah, I put her at third. 16. But just you, could, you could just end it at season 16. She's not season one. But I don't know. I just had to do that just for Eric. Maddie is the first time an American Idol winner that I liked one uh, contestant one um, still a phenomenal run. I look, she's not the most, I like her more for the fact that I was so invested in that season. American Idol had been canceled. It comes back. And the first time I, I have a winner that I pick like from when spoilers drop of the top 20, <laughs> but like, top from that, two that idol comes back and the top two are people that couldn't turn a chair on the voice. But Maddie was just so much fun to watch. I've never felt this was like the investment I felt when I was watching Jax and Gina and Holly. Like it was those days. And I, I love that I got to watch her. That was our first season of reality hour. I have so many like happy feelings of that, just that connection. It just rejuvenated my love for American Idol, which kind of fell off a little bit since then because of how recent seasons have been going. Right. But Maddie is just a shining star for me of the show. And I loved her run, and she was awesome. Okay. Do so I have a good pick? Was that a good pick? Did either of you put her on your list? No. no. But oh, I, was, I was expecting her to be your number one, but now I know that like, I, I know one of your your top two. I don't know the other one. I still just can't get past when she was on The Voice. Why would on earth would she audition with Stone Cold? That was I thought a horrible she did decision. Dog days. When she auditioned for The Voice, she sang Stone Cold. On Why her air dog like his dog days. And Caleb did the dance and he was a mess. Which would have been a good song choice now, but I, I just think he was I just I don't think he was ready. Maddie, I think it was a bad song choice more than anything. Yeah, I, I remember vaguely watching it, but I feel like it was dog I don't know. Anyway, that's Matt that's my third place person. All right. Go ahead, Grace. Speaking of the voice, uh, my number three is the winner of the season where Maddie got rejected, and that is Allison Porter. I know she's a total ringer and I'm not, and I normally hate ringers, but I love her. She was vocally fantastic on every song. Christina's only win. Christina's my home girl. I, I loved her. She was vocally fantastic. Her performance of let him fly. I still go back to all the time. I will say I did not watch that entire season. I did listen to some Allison's performances. She is really, really good. So um, great. I mean, um, and Normally, I have this aversion to ringers, and we'll get to that when Adam reveals one of his top two. I'm sure. But wait, who do you, you guys know who mine is? But don't don't say it yet. Yeah, I don't know which one's the ringer, but oh, I do. <laughs> yeah, don't 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 say. It. Keep it. I won't. I'll let him talk. But yeah, I mean, yeah. Good pick, though. I I liked Allison. I I vaguely think I watched like parts of her season. I just remember she was very talented. So oh. great. Oh, I remember. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, Eric. Okay. You're number three. Okay, so my number three is James Arthur. Um, Not and he's my highest ranking X Factor winner. Um, one of the best live performers I've ever seen. Incredibly unique voice and could write a hell of a song. If you've only heard Say You Won't Let Go, you've only heard one of his least good songs. That's That's like I don't like that song very much. I'm sad that's one that took off. I'm happy that one of them took off. But there are so many songs he's released that are so much better than that one. And I I, I just love him. I mean, he, he's so good. Um, when I saw him perform Recovery Live back in D.C. in 2019, bucket list moment. It was so good. He's amazing. And so I'm really happy that I put him number three. I liked his cover of Impossible. That was good. That was, his, that was his coronation song. That was his winning single. That was I, I've like listened to it recently. Like it's a good song. Like it's, well, it's a cover, but it's 
Like it's well sang and it's a cool rendition. Yeah, he he did a great job with that one. That was one of his better ones, but um, yeah, for, he he's such a good songwriter. He's such a good performer, and yeah, I really really love him. Mm-hmm. Okay, is it my turn again? Yes, yeah. yeah, number two. This is, is this is number hard. two. Or number one. What is Kenichi number two or number one? Kenichi is number two, actually. Um, <laughs> yeah, I put Kenichi Vina. Top tier talent, nothing like him ever on um, America's Got Talent. Brilliant dude and even more brilliant performer. Just what he does, he is the best AGT winner, in my opinion, ever. Just the level of uh, ingenuity and ability to do what he does, phenomenal. And it is a shame what they did to him on uh, AGT Champions. He is I, like I said, the best winner of AGT, in my opinion. And now, go ahead, both of you, and disagree. I didn't watch that season, so I can't really what? retaliate. That was like I, that was the I best season the of AGT. Mostly, so I can't really disagree. I will say, um, eh, he's good, but I mean, <laughs> he's really good. But I think I think Darcy and Paul, I think Darcy and Shinlin are better. Personally. That was the best season of the show, in my opinion. That had the greatest format. It had the best top six. Greatest format, hands down. Agree on that one. But, but other than that, yeah. Phenomenal. Kenichi, so good. Just so good. All right. That's all I got to say. Okay. Grace, you're number two. All right. My number two is the only Dancing with the Stars winner to crack my list, and that is Alfonso Ribeiro, the season 19 winner. I love it's not unusual. I know. I I was like so happy he did that. And like he waited until week four, which is good because normally we get the cliche song choices like in the first week. But no, he made us wait until week four for him to finally break the Carlton out. He wasn't ashamed of it. Like when Steve, like when Jaleel White was on the show, he refused to do the Urkel dance. And I'm not saying he would have won if he had done it, but it would have given him, he might not have fizzled out as quickly as he had. But no, Alfonso made us wait for the Carlton. He he got straight nines the first week, which is unheard of. He was consistently great. He never got anything below an eight. And and then four years later, we crowned a winner that never got anything above an eight until the finale. So clearly the show has gone downhill. And I want <laughs> Alfonso to host next season. Or at some point. But I've wanted him He's to host. Talented for a dude. Long time now. Mm-hmm. And actually, because he hosts Catch 21 on the Game Show Network, and Whitney, who is his partner, is now the card flipper. I will say, I've only seen his It's Not Unusual performance, and it's just so much fun, though. So it's fun. So, it's just, it makes me happy. Like, just watching it, I'm like, yeah. ah, I feel, he actually, I feel happy. He actually did guest host an episode. Tom's, uh, Tom's father wasn't doing well. He actually ended up passing away shortly after. So he did guest host an episode, and other than Ty Ty, he is the only other host this show has had besides Tom. So hopefully he's next. If Ty Ty quits, let Alfonso host. <laughs> I would be. A, well, why can't we just bring back Tom? He he basically said it's never going to happen. Oh, man. Believe me, I want it to. All right. Eric, I think you're up. Yep. My number two is Kelly Clarkson. Kelly she Clarkson. She was on. She was on my didn't deserve to win list. Well, that's false. Okay. Um, no, because like, here's the thing. Tamira Gray was owning that season, and then she got kicked, and then she got Daughtry, and then at that, that point we knew Kelly was going to Because Kelly was like consistently like second or third. She was never number one. Tamira was always number one. False. Anyway. Um, she's a traitor. False. <laughs> anyway. Um, I'm with Grace there. Uh, not that I'm with Grace that she deserved to win. I, I think that she deserved to win, but not I'm with her on the traitor part. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Okay, you can both be wrong. It's okay. That's fine. That's that's, that's totally fine. Um, the OG Idol is considered by many people to be the best one. And honestly, it's neck and neck for me. She's certainly the most successful. Um, an incredible vocalist. As Kelly, Clark- Kelly Oki on her talk show proves, her talents are not limited to just singing her own songs. And I don't think without, I don't think if she didn't win American Idol, I don't think Idol would still be on the air. Not now, no. I think yeah. that she without I, without her as the first winner, the, the show would still not be on. Not still be on. I don't think it would be. I don't have think you ever America's seen from Justin got to Kelly. What? 
Have you ever seen From Justin to Kelly? Because I have. I saw it in the theater. Why? Oh, <laughs> it's terrible. Oh, I know it's terrible in retrospect. <laughs> it's so bad. What's it about? I've never I seen was, it. I was at the age where I didn't decide whether or not I was going to go see a movie in the theater. I was dragged there oh, by man. my mother. It doesn't even have a story. It's so What's bad. it about? What happened? What's going on? Like, what's the... It's it's bad. It's it's a so bad, 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 bad movie. <laughs> so bad. <sighs> uh, is it my turn? Yeah, you're number yes. one. Uh, is it my Cassidy? number one. It is 100% Cassidy Pope from The Voice. Incredibly, <laughs> The Voice, a winner. <laughs> my number one winner. Oh. You're all you're all wrong. She's oh, no. I, nope. I don't care. Yeah. Fine, she's a ringer, but she is she still is my favorite she winner. Not... Okay, here's the thing though: Allison still would have won if she weren't a ringer. Cassidy, there's no way she even would have made the top twenty. Cassidy was so good. Every performance, I love this lady. I you clearly did not watch her performance of My Happy Ending because that was I used to... awful, so bad. <laughs> I actually have the <laughs> iTunes version on my phone. <laughs> I love Cassidy Pope. She is. In my opinion, my like whenever I think of winner, like my personal favorite, it's like Cassidy. Like immediately, it just Wrong. automatically goes there. Wrong. I she's the first time on any of these shows that my winner, my favorite, actually won. The first of all the times I've watched any of these shows, she was the first winner that I wanted to win. I loved her Why? from before. From hit, hey, I loved Hey Monday before she was even on the show. And that's Once why I was, she won. And that, but you know what? That was like. She was the first time a ringer had ever won. Like she was the first winner. And now ringer. it happens all and the time. There's not something to celebrate. She was the first, but she was like the novelty <laughs> of it at the time. And I love this lady. Hey, Monday is incredible. Her music is incredible. I think her look. Maybe she got off to a bit of a rough start, but like oh, mid maybe? live shows, everything was incredible. She. Uh, oh my god i'm with you um are you happy now stupid boy over you oh, is, I think like gold like everything went just i just remember waking up and looking on itunes and seeing her as number one and just being like Phew. like that could actually because happen she was a ringer she was number one for like we i think that song like went like gold or something like it really just sold that much she is so talented. I love this lady. She will That's my forever opinion. be my number one favorite winner of any of these shows. She's not from American Idol, but she is still my favorite singer of any of these. Nope. You can go. All right. You're entitled to your wrong opinion. Now, Eric and no. I will act like we have no sense. Oh, wait, before we move on, what, what, tell me what's, what's wrong with Cassidy. Simple. She would not have won if her, not for her past success. But I'm willing to overlook that because she's from Hey Monday. Okay, again, go be wrong <laughs> somewhere else. I, I can be, like, totally biased here. Like, I'll be honest. Is she the greatest singer ever? I don't think so. No. But she's the one who I had the most, like, attachment and investment in. And that was the first time someone – I it made me believe that someone I liked could win one of these shows. Like, beforehand, I had to settle for Scotty McCreary winning. Like, at least finally I had <laughs> <You what>? <laughs> And then Lauren didn't win Dancing with the Stars either. Okay, Grace, you're number one. All right, my number hey, no, one. I want Eric's reaction. What? Why? Why is Grace so bad? Not Grace, uh, Cassidy. It's not her fault. I mean, she's okay, but it's her okay. Her fault. I mean, the problem is, uh, I just can't support putting someone from a voice number one. <laughs> It's more about the show than about her for me. I drank the Blake Shelton like Kool Aid that season. <laughs> like I was all in on Cassidy Bove. I was the most okay. I will actually make one other point about that actually because I I did watch I did watch her. She was good. I liked her. My issue was that I didn't like that they that they made her that she decided to become a country star afterwards. I think she wasting was... all these tears on you like great music. That was, that was more Blake than anything. I think. Because Blake kept giving her country. Songs. I liked it. That's good. Good stuff. Made money. No, but she she's a pop rock singer, and she should not be up. She should not have gone country. But anyway, that's Blake's fault more than it's hers, though. 
So I can play both wrong. I love doing. I love doing things with the voice. You're selling Cassidy short. Okay, Grace, you're number one. All right, my number one, the first person I ever watched win one of these shows, and she's been amazing since. It is Carrie Underwood. I could not put her anywhere else. I mean, she. I watched her win American Idol when I was ten years old. That's when I first started watching the show. Loved her. Still do. People think I look like her, but I don't think I do. <laughs> yeah, I didn't think so either. Um, but yeah, her duet with John Legend on her Christmas album literally makes my life so much better. She's still loyal to the show, unlike certain people who won. <laughs> I love Kelly. I, I love Grace's like underlying hatred for Kelly. She just hilarious. Her and her, I've given American Idol enough. Really? That show gave you yes, everything. She has. That show gave her everything. It did. And for 15 years, she was very nice to it. But then no, she wasn't. Yes, yeah, she was for 15 years. No, she wasn't. <laughs> she she was a mentor on the show. She went on the show. She was. She left Still. because of money, Eric. Yeah, I heard, and that's I heard the voice. Choice. I also heard the voice. I would also have left because I was offered metric fuck tons of money to leave. <laughs> it's just a whole boat of, of money. <laughs> Kelly is also now the only American Idol contestant with an Emmy, but it's not for singing, so that doesn't count. <laughs> was it it for... It's for her talk show. I was going to say from from. Justin, when you submit Kelly, I don't even know what it's called. She went on. Justin and Kelly. That would have been an Oscar. Emmys are for TV. <laughs> anyway. Grace. No, her talk show won an Emmy. The voice won something. Orton, stop complaining about Kelly Clarkson. I can. <laughs> no, I mean, I, again, Carrie Underwood, the first person I ever watched win one of these shows, has been amazing ever since. I love her music. Love her duet with John Legend. She's actually putting out a gospel album, which I know some people might not like that, but. Hey. And her kids are adorable. Okay. Is that it? Yeah. I think it's your turn. Yeah. You're closing yeah, us I, out. I will just say that I do like Carrie a lot. Um, she she is undeniably talented. My number one is a subjective choice, David Cook. Um, not even <laughs> I was what? a David Archuleta <laughs> fan girl, so I can't not. <laughs> Well, guess I know if I ever get him on this podcast, I know I'm doing it myself, clearly. Um, no, I love David Cook. I was just being funny. I was just following Grace. I was going to say, I mean, I, 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 I like David Cook more when I rewatched the show. But like I said, when the show was originally on, I was 13 and deeply in love with David Archuleta. So, <laughs> and I still like him better, but teach his own. I okay. love David Cook. I, I was just being funny. I, I, I actually really like him. I was just kidding. <laughs> Better, Go on, making your way back in. Okay, okay. Let's see. Uh, <laughs> objective choice. But all of all of the contestants that have been on any of these shows, the one person whose music I have listened to the most post show is David. Um, great singer, great songwriter, amazing personality. Puts on a hell of a live show. And the reason I like him so much as as the winner, and I think for reason he is my top winner, is because he's the first one. He's the one on this list of all of them. I mean, Kelly Clarkson made the show what it was for the first couple of years. But David Cook was really the first winner that changed what the show was about, basically. And uh, began the run of interchangeable winners for the next five years. Grace, stop being negative. It's his favorite. Let him enjoy. <laughs> um, but it wasn't really about the... I wasn't saying that he'd been about interchangeable white guys for guitars. That wasn't what I meant by that. I meant it was about arrangements of songs changing things up. Um, he was the first winner of it really, that really made it as much about the arrangement as about his vocal. And I think that's a good thing for the show, that it's more of a show about artists now than just about singers. Um, and I think Billie Jean, Hello, and The World I Know are three of the best performances I've ever seen on Idol or any reality show. So. I think I he did off say, to a rough start, too. But what? Yeah. He did kind of get off to a rough start. So like his performance of All Right Now was not that great. And that was right before Hello. That was a week before Hello, yeah. Two weeks before Hello, we did Happy Together, which I kind of liked, but no one else liked that one. So He was also basically presented to the world as an apology for Daughtry not winning, which is annoying. But hey. Well, I, I think next the apology for Daughtry not winning, if we're, if we're really honest. But A lot of people yeah, said the same thing about James Durbin, that he was an apology for Adam Lambert not winning, but Adam was better, so it didn't work. Adam was better. James was really good, though, too. 
Um, More than he had a an spiritual angel message. or a face in the crowd, you know, this is the time. Okay. Interjection. <laughs> that, as much as I love David Cook, that song fucking sucks. I love that song. You can laugh. I love that song. It's one of my favorite Idol winners, and I say that not at all ironically. I actually like the it. Most, the loudest I've ever laughed at a concert was the first time I saw David Cook sing that song live after the Idol tour, and he refused to sing the lyric Magic Room, but we just held the microphone. <laughs> and I laughed so hard. It was perfect. It was just perfect. <laughs> Hater. Hater. Anyway, on that note... Um, <laughs> Well, I, I think um, between the three of our lists, we covered a lot of the good ones. We can just agree about the favorite. Favorite. Mine's the best, though. No. Cassidy Pope. Nope. I love how I went with the voice. Me. <laughs> I hate the voice. And I think the voice winner. We're more likely to go with the voice. We all hate the voice, but I like some of their talents. <laughs> it had, like, the voice had two good seasons, and then it just all went down downhill for me. Like, well, two, three Grimmie, if she had won, she would have been on my list. But who? Christina Grimmie. Christina if she had Grimmie. Won, she been on my list. Yeah. I mean, I like Josh too. What? I did like Josh a lot. His on the show, he was great. Oh, I was confusing Josh was. I thought he was like the runner-up. The Cassie no, came not, in third. No. There was that other. I thought you were talking about the no, not, not Jake second. Worthington. Josh was the one who won. <laughs> Josh. Josh Kaufman. Kaufman? Kaufman? Yeah, he actually did a Broadway show. Oh, I remember that. He actually did a show on Broadway with Candace, but apparently it flopped. It was Candace like a limited Glover? run. Yeah, it was yeah. like a limited run, like holiday show, and it was apparently terrible, and it flopped so hard. Yep. Yeah. Oh man, oh, I'm this was fun though. I had, I, part of me was surprised I only had one Dancing with the Stars winner, but then I remember that I don't like most of the winners on that show. <laughs> I love Bindi. Why Bindi's I just, awesome? I didn't want her to win. I wanted Who Alfonso you want to win. I wanted I wanted oh, Nick, Nick Carter to win. He came in second. Uh, but then I wanted AJ to win too, and he didn't. So Yeah, um, if, if Nick couldn't win, I don't think AJ could have won. Okay. At least Nick made the finale. I think we <laughs> should do right. another podcast at some point about most Rob contestants. Oh yes, we should have Gene Irene at number one. Some people who should have could have won. And all Jane of Irene mine are gonna one. be dancing Spoilers. with the stars. Pretty much all of mine are gonna be dancing with the stars. Jax. The entire um, cast of the Bobby Bones season. Pretty much. Is it weird? I don't know about you guys, but like the past two seasons of Idol, I have like no memory of. Like, oh, I yeah. don't remember. I know like the winner and other than them, like basically nothing. I remember Alejandro. These are 14 and, like, forward. I have absolutely nothing except for like a few it's like a, performances. Because when I was putting together this list, I was thinking about it and I was like, I don't remember. Like, I remember... Sophia Wackerman, <laughs> Sophia James, and like, but like I just don't remember these people, and I, I'm just like, why don't I remember them? Because the show kind of because this year in particular, at least I don't, I can I I can't I can't excuse last year not remembering them. This year, well, I mean, two years ago, I can Johnny excuse. West. Was this year, the problem with this year is only have four live shows, so it went by so fast that you forgot to afford so much faster. Mm -hmm. Oh man! I mean, I remember the last season because I auditioned for it, and then I was literally on the show for like two seconds in you like were? a background. Really? Yeah, there was a scene where Clay Aiken was like taking a selfie, and I was in line like fumbling through my bag. <laughs> Yay! You're so, yeah, I was on the famous. show for like like a split second. I was on the show for like a split second. I was in the and audience, the Philly, <laughs> and the Philly auditions that year were a wreck. <laughs> I will say. The one person I forgot to include in my all of mentions list was Trent, and I'll add him there now. I he was on my he was my tenth place, like on my honorable mentions. I was like, I can't put four honorable mentions, but he would have been. He was on my list, and then it was George Sampson. I was almost gonna put on my list. Who's that? Do any of you know who that is? Yes, no. I do. Dancer one season two of Britain's Got Talent. He went Dancing with the Star. Uh, Britain's Got Talent. I was gonna say I know all the Dancing with the Stars winners. He did not win that show. <laughs> yeah, um, Trent. Him, yeah, those were the two I cut off the list. Trent and George Sampson. George Sampson was pretty awesome. Like on, the, on BGT Champions. Honestly, a, a, a Trent's song on paper is like one of like my top ten most listened to songs ever. So that's why. His his chandelier cover. It was really good. 
I, I, I mean, I, I can't stand time, Sia now. Like, Sia is totally canceled in my eyes. But, I mean, like like I said, Sia is completely canceled. But that chandelier cover. I'm not even crazy. talking about that part. I'm talking about the fact that um, back when Trent was on Idol, I wasn't rooting for him. I was rooting for a Porsche like an idiot. Um, <laughs> the Porsche was fantastic. <laughs> that, the, hashtag aged like milk. Remember when Kelly Clarkson <laughs> told, was a guest judge and she told her that she was going to win? So she's a traitor and a liar. By the way, Azad oh, in the chat said George Sampson was really good. He agrees with me. Um, Azad, by the way, I put Kenichi as number two on my list. Just just want to say. He likes Kenichi. And, and, and Grace down. yawns. I'm tired. That's why I'm yawning. <laughs> <laughs> And on that note, I want to say I am Eric Asher. Yeah, let's wrap this up before we get any crazier. <laughs> EricAsher.com and bit.ly slash Eric Lovitz and Eric on Crosser on Twitter. Grace, your turn. Uh, reality2 underscores Grace on Twitter. I'm also a judge on Dancing with the Stars Showdown. It's at DWTS Showdown on Twitter. I know Matthew is watching if he's still here, if he runs it. But we are starting at the end of January, I believe. And I am playing, of course, AJ McLean. <laughs> We were oh, actually man. redoing this past season, but then we decided not to do it. And Adam would have been upset anyway because Carol Baskin wasn't part of it. I would have been Carol Baskin. I would have dressed up in a, in a lion costume, all that stuff. Anyway, you can find me on Twitter at Adam Soapbox. I run my website, adamsoapbox.com, and my YouTube channel where I review books. Although apparently I don't because I haven't had a video up in like a month because super Check busy. On that Bobby Bones video. Yes. I have it. I have the book. I, I'm I'm fully committed to sticking to the to the deal. I mean, I, I tweeted a picture. I've purchased. I think I got the one. It was barrels. <laughs> I just tweeted a picture. I think I messaged in our group chat just to see what Grace's reaction would be. Like, I didn't say any mention. I said, "Look, here's the next books I'm reading." <laughs> and what was the Bobby Bones one? Because <laughs> I just wanted to. What what was your reaction? I didn't even get to see that. Like, what did you? I don't even remember. I think I might have just like silently laughed to myself. <laughs> okay. Oh man. We will be back definitely. Um, mid- When's February. Idol back? Idol's back February fourteenth, Valentine's Day. So we'll be back then, right around then. No spoilers. No spoilers yet this year. So we'll see. I usually time. avoid them anyway. Yeah, right. I'll, I'll try to avoid them this year, but I'll 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 I'll, I'll fall for it. I'll, I'll I'll do it, and I'll ruin Adam's time again. I won't do that. <laughs> and on that note, um, thanks everyone for watching. We will see you all at least um soon. Um, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. Um, I'll put the like and subscribe banner up. Yay! And on that note, American Idol everybody. starts on Valentine's Day. Woo. See you soon. Good night. Good night.